a mistake of immeasurable, a tragedy, actually, of immeasurable magnitude, if each one of those communities cares about its own half of that extra mitzvah. If we in Israel care only about Israel and don't care about the American Jewry, the North American Jewry, and if the North American Jewry cares about itself and doesn't care about Israel. And the, our obligation in this generation is to put aside, not to neglect, but to put aside different opinions on issues that are very sensitive to each one of us and promise each other, maybe we need a new deal that we will never forget and, for, and, and neglect the other half of that extra mitzvah that we have, nor us, nor you. But l let me challenge you on that for a moment. I'm sure you get asked often about one of the key issues that a lot of the conversations here are focusing on, the Kotel crisis, the conversion bill, a sense among progressive American Jews especially that Israel does not value their Jewish beliefs and their Jewish practice. What do you, as the representative of the Israeli government, what can you say to them? Well, first of all, I try to say the same thing in spite of the fact that I am now a diplomat. Uh, it seems that I am not yet used to be a diplomat, so I say the same thing to my government in Israel, to the American Jewish leaders here. A very undiplomatic thing to do. But uh, I will tell you this. And uh, look, um, first of all, uh, we know about the political circumstances, uh, and sometimes I remember that uh, in this country, President Obama, after Sandy Hook, went on camera and wept. She shed tears. Nevertheless, he, he couldn't change the gun regulation rules in laws in this country. Maybe there is a majority for that, maybe there is a minority for that, but he didn't succeed. So it's something, something similar what happens here. But I want to tell something the audience, not you that are Israeli. My friends, I understand the, the, the frustration. But oy vey and gewald are beautiful Yiddish words, but they are not a substitute for policy and strategy. Um, moreover, a press release in English published in Manhattan, will not sway one Israeli in Zderot, in Kiryat Shmona, and even in Tel Aviv. Um, yesterday I had a meeting with some of your leaders, and one of them told me, it's, no, uh, it's not our duty to educate Israelis about American Jewry. And I say, why not? If we, do, we Israelis do such a lousy job in educating ourselves about American Jewry, why would not assist us? And I think you should do that. I think you, should, you need boots on the ground in Israel to advance the causes you believe in. It's your right. You are Jewish. It's your right to come. You don't vote. That's right. We will make the decisions ultimately, the Israeli citizens. But you have every right to come and educate, to come and sway positions, to come and lobby. Yes, do it. Okay. Giddy, I want to turn to you. In June, when the Kotel crisis, when the Kotel crisis erupted, there were two layers of coverage, in the, in the, at least in the Israeli press. There, was though, there were those newspapers that focused on the potential billions of shekels that would be lost in donations because people were upset. And there was the more substantive discussion, I plug my own newspaper, I think that's what we were focused on, of questions of peoplehood, of what, what will happen to the sense of identity, of collective identity that we have. Now, you've spoken about, written about, how Israel's relationship with diaspora Jewry should be defined by the government of Israel as a national security issue. What do you mean by that? So first of all, when we speak about national security, we speak about the ability of nations of people to protect their ethos, to protect their why. And for example, if it is true that the Russian government compromised American elections, then what you have here is 
an assault on American national security without a single American being physically compromised. And in other cases, we see nations and people who are willing to go to tremendous compromise of their own security in order to protect their national security. So the question is, what is national about Israeli security? And the perspective I'd like to bring forward here is that Zionism and Israel, the reason of being is to serve the significant and sustained existence of the Jewish people. Yes, we are about coexistence and co-dependence and co-prosperity and co-resilience and co-leadership and it's a story about togetherness. But really at the core, it is much more about the state of Israel serving world Jewry than all of us world Jews serving Israel. And if you subscribe to that notion, you'll probably agree that the vibrant diaspora is a Zionist imperative, not a Zionist compromise. And then the next question is, what has it been to be the nation state of the Jewish people in the 21st century? And the answer to that requires our understanding of what is special about our time. First, in our time, nearly 100% of diaspora Jews choose to live in the diaspora. They live in freedom, in relative prosperity, in relative security. And if they want, they can go to Israel. The second point is, for the first time in our history, Israel and the Jewish people together can move the needle on global issues, quantitatively. Until now, for centuries, only through our ideas and visions and values. Now we can actually change the world. And the third thing is that the state of Israel is the center, the leading center of life, of affluence, of, of resources for the Jewish people. And with that power comes great responsibility. And that's a responsibility not only to support security of Jewish communities around the world. It's also about the responsibility for the unity of the Jewish people, for our ability to live together as a global, evolving Jewish community. And that's why when we see action in Israel that threatens or compromises the relationship with diaspora Jews, we see a crack in a pillar of a national security of Israel. So it's a question of identity also. Does the, do the leaders in Israel see the nation state of Israel as a state for all Jews or just for the Israeli Jews? So I think we need to distinguish between leadership and politics. And it's an important distinction. Many leaders in Israel subscribe to this notion. Israeli politics is subject to dynamics that often compromise this notion. But really, the problem is much deeper. We have to be brutally honest about it. Decades and decades of negation of the diaspora and negation of diaspora life have brought together a very unhealthy mix in Israel of arrogance toward the diaspora and ignorance of, the, of diaspora life. And that combination often breeds an outlook that is unfortunately dismissive, borderline abusive, domineering toward world jury. So really what we need to do is go beyond the political level to civic leadership in Israel and to engage people who are in position of leadership, societal entrepreneurs, organizations, people in the bureaucracy, influencers, in talking about what does it mean to be the nation state of the Jewish people in the 21st century? And being the nation state of the Jewish people in the 21st century requires Israel to support and to inspire a global network of vibrant, prosperous communities. And getting rid of all its politicians, basically, is what you're saying. But um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I just want to wrap up. We, we're, we're short on time here. But we, I want to get your predictions for the future. Next year, the GA will be taking place in Israel, in Tel Aviv. So are each of you optimistic, pessimistic about the future? And what do you think both sides can do now to save us from having to say, have the same conversation next year in Tel Aviv? Donny, we'll start with you. Well, I think, you know, Yaakov, uh, that uh, um, we have to understand that uh, in spite of the fact that we are Jewish, our marriage is Catholic. There is no divorce in this marriage. 
Um, a few weeks ago, I was in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I, I had a, this town hall meeting with the Jewish community. And a rabbi, I think he was a conservative rabbi, spoke really from the bottom of his heart about the, the, the pain he feels about some decisions made in Israel. And I identified with his pain. But then he concluded with the sentence, and this was the last straw. Hmm. And I told him, Rabbi, there is no last straw in our relationship. We may need marital advice. <laughs> um, I befriended Dr. Ruth Westheimer in New York. <laughs> uh, but there is no last straw and no divorce in our relationship. OK. We have uh, the pr the pre President Rivlin has arrived, so I got three words from each of you. Sorry, Bethany and, and Giddy, very quickly. I'm going to make two, I'm going to say two things. One is we used to have a vertical relationship, and it's now more parallel, or at least we need to treat it as not Israel on top or U.S. dollars on top, but something where we're in conversation. So having this conversation next year wouldn't be necessarily a bad thing. The second thing I want to say is with this idea that we're in these marital relationships or the, the, the use of family relationships to define who we are. You know, in families, if you talk to a psychologist, and I am a psychologist by training, there are families where the, uh, the members are over-identified and enmeshed, and it's not healthy. It's good to have a little space. We can have separate perspectives and still be in relation to one another. And I say, let's promote that. Okay, and Giddy? I believe it's not about predicting. It's about shaping. It's going to be a pivotal year. And here is what I'd love to see in this year. Some government legislation and policies about these relationships that move in another direction. I'd love to see immersive experiences for Israeli leadership, primarily here, mm -hmm. and beginning to bring systematically the people in key positions to experience the community uh, in America. Third extensive, beginning of extensive engagement of leadership groups across Israeli society in the, with the conversation of what does it mean to be the nation state of the Jewish people. Another point relates to the audience here. It would be fantastic if by next year, many more of us are able to articulate a proud narrative of world Jewry that celebrates the legacy, the contribution, mm -hmm. and the destiny of world Jewry in conjunction with Israel toward the future. No. And the last thing I'll say is, how great it would be if the GA in Israel next year, half of the room is Israeli. And Israelis, and Israelis that share this vision, that are able to speak in Hebrew, in Zionist terms, loyal to national security thinking in Israel about the future of this relationship. Well, and I think that would be an awesome GA. I want to thank our panelists, and we look forward to seeing you again in Israel. We stay seated. Thank you very much.